Okay, so in this video, we will determine whether the series converges or diverges. Now here we could use the comparison test, but it is much simpler to use the limit comparison test. And hopefully, you will appreciate how elegant the limit comparison test is. So we're summing these terms. So this is our sequence AN. It's a rather complicated sequence. And we're going to try and construct a much simpler sequence that is very close to AN. And again, all we really care about is how big is AN roughly when N is large. So let's see. Look at your numerator. When N is large, 2N is way bigger. <coughs> Sorry. 2N is way bigger than 1. So the dominant term on the numerator is 2N, but we can always ignore constant multiples. So we can take simply n over on our denominator when n is large n to the 4 is way larger than 5n squared and then 8 so our dominant term is n to the 4. Let's simplify this is simply 1 over n cubed and this is now the intuition when n is large sure we are summing a complicated looking sequence but when n is large, we're really just summing roughly 1 over n cubed, which will give us a convergent p-series. And this is now our bn, the much simpler sequence. Well, we have to, before we apply the limit comparison test, we have to show that the two conditions are met. The first condition is that a n and b n are both positive. Well, this is clear, right? When n is positive, this is clearly positive, this is clearly positive. So this is just worthy of a mention. So clearly, both a n and b n are positive. And the only other thing to check is that our intuition is correct. We are claiming that a n when n is large is roughly 1 over n cubed, roughly b n. And we can show this by looking again at the limit of a n over b n. If the limit is a positive number, our intuition is correct, and we are essentially done. So a n So here's a n, and we divide now by b n bn is 1 over n cubed, but if you divide by 1 over n cubed, you can multiply by the reciprocal, which is n cubed over 1, which is simply n cubed. Well, we can multiply out the numerator by n cubed, and we will now have a very simple limit. So we'll have 2 n to the 4 plus n cubed over n to the 4 plus 5 n squared plus 8. Now it's clear, as n tends to infinity, that we have an infinity over infinity case. But here, do not use L'Hopital's rule, we can do much simpler. Clearly, the largest term is the n to the 4 on top and on the bottom, so we can simply divide top and bottom by n to the 4. And this is okay, as 1 over n to the 4 over itself is 1, so we are not cheating here. And as soon as we multiply out, we'll have a very simple limit. So we'll have 2 plus 1 over n on the numerator. All over 1 plus well, n squared over n to the 4 is 1 over n squared. So 5 over n squared plus 8 over n to the 4. And now the limit should be very apparent. As n goes to infinity, 1 over n, 5 over n squared, 8 over n to the 4 all shrink to 0. And we're left with 2 over 1, which is simply 2. And we don't care that the value is 2, but that it is positive. So both conditions of the limit comparison test are met. Our two sequences are strictly positive, 
and in the limit a n over b n approaches 2. And let's see now, we don't even have to remember the conclusion of the limit comparison test. If we understand the intuition, we can simply reapply it and obtain that this series converges very intuitively. So let's look at what this says. When n is large, a n over b n is very close to 2. So if we multiply by b n on both sides, a n must be roughly 2 times b n. So a n over b n is roughly 2 when n is large. So a n is roughly 2 times b n. Therefore, the series of a n is roughly twice the series of bn. And now we can look at the series explicitly. bn is simply 1 over n cubed. This is a p series, and p is 3, which is strictly larger than 1. So this B series converges, therefore, is a finite real number. So 2 times a real number is a real number, therefore, is finite. So the original series is finite, less than infinity. But as we have a series of positive terms, if it is finite, it therefore converges. And so we're done by the limit comparison test. So we can go back and say, well, this series converges. By, and you don't have to write the limit comparison test. You can simply write LCT for limit comparison test. And that's it. And so hopefully you can appreciate that how elegant the limit comparison test is. You look at the terms you're summing over. Ask yourself, what are the terms roughly when n is large? If you have either a p-series or a geometric series, you should be happy. All you have to show, ultimately, is that both terms are positive, and that your intuition is correct, that a n is roughly the size of b n, and the check that your intuition is correct is simply the limit of a n over b n. Once you have a positive limit, Again, it cannot be infinity. It has to be a finite real number. But once you have checked this, all it says is that your intuition is correct. Yes, a n is roughly b n. In this case, a n is roughly 2 times b n. So your intuition was correct. And so the initial series, even though it may look intimidating, is essentially nothing but roughly twice a convergent P series therefore converges as well. And that is hopefully why, or at least hopefully demonstrates that the limit comparison test is very elegant, as you do not have to struggle with inequalities.